GD. In this method, it's called F. I'll explain. It's called the IMC filter. Okay, that's why it comes this term F. I present it this way because that's how it's presented in the book. Okay, but this GF, this F here means the exact same thing which I'm about to show you is the GD. Okay, you can think of it as the same thing. You pick it to look like this. Typically, R is one, right? First order gain of one, time constant tau c. Sometimes you have to have an r greater than one because you want the controller to have integral, a I mean, not, not, you may want it to have derivative action, but not like double derivative action. I talked about this last time. So the way to interpret this equation is you plug into this, and this f here is just gd, and almost always it will be one over tau c s plus one with this r one, okay? All right. Like I said, F is the IMC filter. Tau C, same thing it was before, closed loop time constant. R is required to make this controller implementable. I talked about this last time. I don't want to go over that now. But OK. And then if you take this, this is the advantage of having this expression here. Let's see. OK. So I derived this. Well, I didn't actually derive it. From this equation, I derived it. But remember, we had this linear relationship between the set point and the output. So now what I'm going to do, I want to see what the response is actually going to be. I'm going to take the controller I just came up with, this GC star. I'm going to plug it into this equation and see what I get. Okay, That's what I'm doing right here. Okay. So y over ysp is just this thing. I just took it from the previous slide where it said you know, y equals this thing times ysp plus something, some term involving the disturbance. So I'm not worried about the disturbance now. I'm just interested in what the response is going to be to set point changes. All right, what's my GC star? My GC star is this guy right here, 1 over G minus times F. Okay, what's my G? Well, I factored my G into this, right, a G plus and a G minus. So I plug that in right there. So you can see what the controller does. It cancels the, the stuff you can cancel. It cancels the G minus stuff, and it just leaves the G plus there. Okay, so when, after this cancels, you rewrite it, it looks like this. Okay, okay so what does this say? This says, you've obtained a response now between the set point and the output that consists of what you want, which is f, or gd equivalently, plus stuff you couldn't cancel. Okay? So this is, this is the part of the process you couldn't cancel. You just have to live with the fact it's going to be there. So for example, if there's a time delay in the process, it's still going to be there. If there's a right half plane zero in the process, it'll still be there. Okay? So again, a common problem I give on students on a test is to ask them what this looks like, right? And then they don't remember this equation, so then they plug everything in and try to do all the algebra, and it takes them like half a page if they ever get it at all, and the answer is it's right here. The response between the set point and the output is what you want, F, plus the stuff you couldn't cancel, the G plus. Okay? And even though it's called F, just learn to call it GD, same thing. In fact, if you called it GD, I wouldn't care. It would be fine. All right, well, this all sounds great, except you don't know how to do it. All right, so um, <laughs> here's a couple of examples. All right, and one thing, um, well, I'll make this point in a minute. So this problem should look familiar because we did the exact same problem using the direct synthesis method. So if there's our um, transfer function for the process. There's our desired closed loop response, F, or equivalently GD. Okay, it's exactly what we did with the direct synthesis method. All right, so this one's really simple. Um, so we look at this transfer function, and we, we first thing you'd always want to do is form the G plus, okay? And then G minus is whatever's left over. So you look at the G and you say, what naughty stuff is in the G? Is there a time delay? No. Is there a right half plane zero? No, because there's no zeros at all. There is no naughty stuff. G plus is one, okay? G, which means G minus is G. It's what's ever left over, which is everything in this case. Typically, G plus will not be 1, but just to illustrate a point. OK, so oh, now you have your G minus. You can use this equation I gave you, right? Form the IMC controller GC star 1 over G minus times F. So there's the F, there's the G minus, plug it in, you get that. OK? OK, well, but then I told you we really don't like to implement that controller. We'd like to implement the standard feedback controller, which can be calculated from the IMC controller using this equation. I put this on the previous slide. Okay. All right, there it is. Plug in your GC star. It appears there, it appears there. Plug in your G, which is there. Do a bunch of algebra. This is going to be disheartening when it's all said and done. Okay. 
do a bunch of algebra, it's an I, it ends up being a PI controller. I mean, I'm hoping once you get it at this point, algebra is always the same, right? First thing you want to do is get ratio of two polynomials. I don't want a ratio of two polynomials in the numerator and denominator, so I'm just, you know, I'm going to multiply across what? I'm going to multiply across by this whole thing here, top and bottom. I'm going to gather terms, simplify, and eventually, through some miraculous um, magic of algebra, I'll end up getting something that looks like this. It's actually, as usual, more convenient to get something that looks like this, but I've done an additional step here that puts it in the standard PI. So it's a PI controller. That's funny. It was a PI controller before. And in fact, it's the exact same PI controller you got with the direct synthesis method. So you're like, why, why do <laughs> Okay. The answer is you wouldn't do this. Okay. So this is actually a lot more laborious than the previous method to find the same thing. So this is the method you tend to apply only if the direct synthesis method doesn't work. Okay. If the direct synthesis method works, which means g plus is 1, that means that you either have neither a time delay or a right half plane 0, the two methods are equivalent to each other. Okay? So if I, if I gave you this transfer function here and I asked you design a controller using either direct synthesis or IMC, you choose direct synthesis. It's simpler, right? Um, but normally the two won't be the same. They're only the same if the g plus ends up being 1. Okay? So I just want to do this to show you that you get the same thing if that's the case. It's, it's more work, though, so you wouldn't normally do it this way. OK, fine. How about a, how about a non-trivial example? Now here's a non-trivial example. Yeah? Yeah, those are the only two things. Oh, All right. All right, so let's go through a, a, a non-trivial example. Okay, so let's take, we take this one. Okay? All right, so here's our process. Now we immediately identify that we have a 0. The 0 is at s equal plus 1. Right there, let's say. It's in the right half plane. It's a problem. Okay? We've got to get rid of it. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do the factorization. I'm going to erase this. I'm sure I wish I wouldn't, but I'm going to do it anyway. OK. What I've done here is just given you the answer. I'll, I'll show you how I came about this answer. Okay. So I'm trying to form the g plus. And the procedure said, first of all, if you have a right half plane 0 or you have a time delay, put it in g plus. Okay. So the first thing I do is put that in there because it's in the transfer function. Okay. Okay. The second thing it says is, um, well, okay. So there's there's the s minus one. Then I need to form what is currently undefined in your mind. It's something called an all pass. Okay. Here's the way an all pass works. It's a pretty simple concept actually. If you have a 0 at this point, in the denominator, you need a pole at the re reflection across the imaginary axis. So if you have a 0 at plus 1, you need to get a pole at minus 1. Okay? That's where I come up with this. Right? That's a term where it has a root at minus 1. Okay? So an all pass is a thing where um, the zeros and the poles are mirror reflections of each other across this imaginary axis. Okay? If I was cruel, I don't know if cruel is the right word, and I gave you something that had two complex conjugate zeros there and there, not quite drawn properly, but then you need to put something in the denominator that has two poles across mirror reflection across that axis. Okay? That's called an all pass. Okay? So f step one is put this thing in the numerator. Step two is put this thing in the denominator. Okay. I put this in the numerator because it's stuff I need to get rid of. I put this in the denominator because that makes it an all pass. Okay. If this thing in the numerator was s minus 12, this would be s plus 12. Okay. All right. So it looks good so far, but now if you check the gain of this thing, hopefully you remember the easiest way to check the gain of any transfer function is just set s equals 0. 
If you set s equals 0 on this transfer function, you can see the gain is minus 1. Minus 1 and 1 are not this, plus 1 are not the same. <laughs> okay. So that's why I append this minus sign here. That makes sure the gain is 1. Okay. So I've satisfied the three requirements. Number one, I've plugged that thing in there. Right? Number two, I've made an all pass. And number three, I've made sure the gain is equal to plus one. Right? So now we thing is guaranteed to have a gain of one. All right. So that's where you come up with the G plus. I'll show you another example in a minute. All right, so now that you have the g plus, you can compute the g minus, because you know that g is equal to g plus times g minus. So once you have the g, which you're starting with, you have the g plus, you can just figure out the g minus by dividing the two, right? So that's all I've done here. I mean, it, it's, it's very simple to see what's going to happen. I'm just going to get rid of this thing, put an s plus 1 in its place, and put a minus sign. But if you can't see that, then you can just physic or you can actually explicitly take the G, divide it by the G plus, you'll get that. Okay. Now we're going to do the desi controller design on this. You can see the difference between this, which we're going to do the design based on, and this we started with. We've gotten rid of that zero, right? We've gotten rid of that right half plane zero, and we got now a left plane zero, which is okay. Okay. And again, the reason we do it in this way is because it's optimal in some sense that I can't fully explain to you, or even partially explain to you. All right, so it looks good. We've got our g minus. Now we plug it into this equation here. Okay. So we have 1 over g minus. So just invert this thing. That's where this whole part comes from. And then you multiply it times f. So I specified f to be um, this thing here. Okay. So in a typical problem, I'll give you the f. So I've said, please design the controller with an IMC filter or Clo desired close of response, same thing, of with a tau c equal one quarter. So I'm looking for the response here, the, the IMC filter to be one over this thing here. I've told you the tau c is one quarter, in other words. I, you couldn't know, you wouldn't put one quarter here by yourself. <laughs> you put one quarter here because in the problem state when I would have told you, put one quarter there for tau c. Okay. And then for reasons that aren't completely clear given how far I've taken the problem, I decided to multiply across both sides of the equation by 4. Okay? And so now when I plugged in the f, I plugged in this thing right there. All right? All right, so that's the IMC controller. Now, if I made you, which I don't think I would probably do for a problem like this, this is not the regular controller GC, right? It's the, G, it's the IMC controller. If I wanted to make you do so, I could ask you to find the standard controller by using this equation, right? This would get pretty messy. You know, plug in that thing there and there and then the process there and simplify. But I'm just, at this point, you could see you could do that. You could see you don't want to do that. So why would we do that, basically? Question? Um, so for the R part, the part that makes the denominator proper, mm -hmm. um, of, the, of the filter, um, is that almost one before the first order system, second, 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 etc.? Well, um, it depends on what you want the controller. I talked a little bit about this last time, but let's say the system is second order, right? Second order system in the numerator, it has no numerator dynamics. The numerator is just a constant. If you applied this with r equal 1, okay, you'd get, a, you'd get derivative action in the controller. And if you want derivative action in the controller, that's okay. So I think the, the way to, to think about this is it's almost always going to be this with r equal 1. If it's not, I'll tell you what r should be. But it's meant, to, so it's, it's a, what you want r to be here is a function both of the process transfer function and what modes you want in the controller. Like if the system was second order, okay, and you did not want derivative action in the controller, then you would pick r equal 2. Okay, but I, I would always tell you what r is, and it's essentially always going to be 1. Okay, I'm just doing this for completeness. All right? OK, right, so at this point, we're, sorry, at this point, we're not interested in coming up with the regular controller. We could, but it just take a lot of algebra, so I don't bother showing it. But you, I, just, you just plug in that equation. OK, here's another example. This is a little bit funky, but anyway, that's fine. So here is first order plus time delay, OK? 
What I've chosen to do with this example is to do the following. Rather than deal with the transfer function with the time delay directly, I want to eliminate the time delay in terms of one of the approximations we talked about. This is the Pade approximation for this thing. So you may recall, or may, may not, that if we have an e to the minus theta s term, time delay, then the first order Pade approximation of this thing looks like that. Okay. So for this problem, what, theta, theta is equal to 2? So that means we're going to get 1 minus s over 1 plus s. That should be what I wrote up there, right? So how do you know to do this? I would tell you, <laughs> right? Like I would tell you, here's your transfer function, do x, blah, 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 and use the first order Pade approximation. I wouldn't expect you to decide when you should do it and when you shouldn't. So I would either tell you to do this or not. In this case, I told you to do it. You did. Okay. And I would give you this thing, okay? the closed loop uh, transfer function, or yeah, the desired closed loop transfer function, IMC filter, the same thing. Okay. Now, typically there is, which I try to explain, there's a relationship between this number and the process time constant. So in this case, you can see the process time constant is 5, and my desired closed loop time constant is 3. And I told you a general rule is pick this thing to be 1 half of that, which would actually be 2.5. But you see, it's about the order of magnitude I told you you would tend to choose. So is this one up here, but it's hard to explain, harder to explain. Okay. So um, when I give you a problem, I will typically give you this, but then I might ask you, why is the tau c value of 3 reasonable? I, don't wanna I won't ask you to come up with it, because I don't want everyone to come up with a different answer. It's too hard to grade. But I, I might come back and say, why is tau c 3 reasonable? And the way you would justify that is you'd say, well, tau is 5, and this is, you know, 60%. I'm not very good. It's, it's almost half of tau. So it's, it's chosen some relation to tau. In other words, if the open loop time constant here was 100, you wouldn't pick tau c equal 3. That's not reasonable. Okay? You'd, pick tau, you'd pick it to be 50. So the way to uh, understand the choice here is it's some relation to the time constant of the process. But I'll typically give it to you. Okay, then. Um, so now we need to do the factorization. It's pretty easy to do in this case because what am I going to do? Let's just do it on the board again. It so happens that, right, you can see you've got a problem here, right? Because either you have a time delay or if you eliminate it, you get this thing. But a time delay introduces a right half plane zero. No free lunch here. Um, and you, you happen to notice that this is already an all pass. I'll show you that in a minute, but okay. So, but using the strategy, so let's say we're, we're, we choose to work with this one, not the time delay directly. So you're going to need to form the G plus. First thing you're going to do is step one, get rid of the naughty stuff, which, include, which is the numerator of this right there, right? So you're going to put 1 minus S in the numerator, okay? Now you need to form an all pass, which means you need a pole at S equal pl plus 1. Right, so again, the idea here is uh, you have a zero right there at plus one. You need a pole at minus one. That's an all pass. Okay, so that's where I came up with that. That has a pole at minus one. Okay, now I need to check the gain. Is the gain one? Yes, because when I said equals zero, one over one is one. So there's the g plus. When you do the Pade approximation, you can see that 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 thing spawned, if you will. Um, that exact term there. So I'm going to put this whole thing here, okay, into the G plus. That's where I came up with this. So what's left over, the G minus, is just this without the time delay or equivalently this without the Pade approximation part, just the first order part, okay? So whether you want to view it as the time delay directly or the approximation, this factorization just got rid of the time delay, okay? All right. So then you get the G minus just being what's left over. Form the IMC controller, 1 over that G minus F, which is what I gave you here. Plug it in, you get this thing. Okay. Now this one's a little simpler than this, obviously. So you could, in principle, plug it into the equation back over here. Sorry to flip around this equation here. And you could get the GC if you want it. Okay. So if I ask you on a test to find the GC, I'm going to have to give you a problem like this. I mean, I could give you that, but what's the point? Like you spend 15 minutes doing algebra. Right? You make a mistake. It doesn't prove anything. So, you know, 
It depends on whether it's easy to do. I may ask you to do it. All right. OK, so um, let, how much time do we have here? All right, so let me, go, let me do one other example. I'm just going to do the factorization part. OK, I'm just going to make this up on the fly, and we'll see how it works out. So let's see how I want to do this. Um, denominator doesn't make any difference. I'm going to take that to be s plus 1 cubed. It does, the denominator is irrelevant. OK, so what do I want the numerator to be? I want the numerator to be s plus 2, OK, and then 2s minus 3. I'm just making this up. Okay, so there's your problem. So, so that's the G. So someone says, hey, apply the IMC method to this. First of all, do you need to apply the IMC method to this? It looks like it, right? Because this, this is going to yield a right half plane zero, right? Okay. All right, so first thing you can do, so we're going to do the factorization of this guy. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is put the bad stuff in the numerator. The, so you see this thing has two zeros, but one of the zeros is fine. It's only this one that's the problem. So that's the only one we're going to put in there. Got it? Not, not the other one, because the other one's in the left half plane. It's OK. All right. Then if we look at this, we can see we have a 0. And if, if I can compute correctly, I can see the zeros at plus 3 halves. Right? Set this equal to 0, solve for s. That's plus 3 halves. So there's plus 3 halves, there's a 0. When you draw these diagrams, you usually write a 0 as a circle and a pull as an x, if you kept wondering why I'm drawing circles. OK. So now I need a pull over here at minus 3 halves. Well, it's not too hard to see. That'll do the job. Right? That's a, that's a pull at minus 3 halves. And then I need to check the gain of this guy. I can see the gain currently is minus 1, right? So now I need to append a minus sign onto here. And that, that's the g plus, OK? So that means the g minus that will proceed within the design is going to look like this. You got the s plus 2 here. Now this thing's going to be replaced by this. You're going to have the same denominator. And then there's going to be a minus sign there. OK, and then you proceed. And I haven't actually looked in detail at the exam from last year, but I can effectively guarantee you there's another problem on that. OK? So this is about the level of detail I'm going to, to potentially ask. OK? So the key to applying this method is to do the factorization correctly. It's like once you do that, you can just roll with the rest of it in terms of implementing the equations. OK, so I think we've got like about 10 minutes. I promised to end early, but I guess I didn't. But this, it's not a bad idea, because this is important, and you will in appreciate this in the long run. OK, so I promise you the following, that in the book, I believe it's table 12.1 or 12.3, I can't remember, someone has done the following. They've taken a bunch of transfer functions, a bunch of Gs, OK, and they've gone through this IMC design method. And then they've come up with a bunch of contr PID controllers. So just like we did this one, okay, we said, ah, first order, specify this filter or desired closed loop try and constant, go through the design, and ah, it's a PI controller. The gain is that thing right there, and the tau i is equal to tau. Okay? So that's the first entry in this table. Okay? You can see the way they write it. Instead of they write k at kc times k. So. Right, the KC is actually this thing divided by K, same thing we got. There's the tau, there's no D, it's no derivative in this controller. Then they did problem two and three and four and five and six, okay? So these provide ways of actually tuning the controller. So if I gave you, for example, this, um, trying to pick one that's interesting. I guess they're all bizarrely interesting, but let's say I gave you a transfer function that looked like that, okay? So in other words, you have this transfer function. For your problem, you have a particular value of k, beta, tau, and squiggly. Okay? And I say design an IMC controller. The, the first thing you want to do is use the table. right? Otherwise, you have to do all this, you know, do all this yourself. It's a lot of work, right? Um, 
if I tell you don't use the table, then you got to do it. But if I don't tell you, it means you can use the table. So once you identify you have a transfer function that looks like this, you can immediately say, ah, from the table, it's a PID controller. There's the KC. Well, actually, there's the KC times K. There's the tau A and there's the tau D. You're done. Yeah? If you, if you gave us that transfer function model, we wouldn't be able to use it for the IMC method anyways, right? Because it's not a, necessarily a process transfer model for a desired. No, this, 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 by model, this means this is the G. So, it, so for each case, like for this problem, I started with that G, right? right? For this problem, I started with that G. These are all G's. Someone's gone through the whole procedure for you and come up with the answer, okay? Like, I, we, did, we already did that one ourselves. If you go back and look at the example, you'll see we derived exactly those entries, okay? So this provides an alter another way to tune a PID controller. So the idea here is you go in the table, you find which entry corresponds to the one you of your particular case. Then, you know, like in this case, it's only PI. In this case, it's PID. I thought in one case it's only proportional, but maybe not, okay? Um, and so this is actually my preferred way of tuning any PID controller. To use these formulas, you have to have parameters of the process, right? Like for this one, for example, you're going to need to know the K and the tau and the squiggly, which you will. Um, and then you have to choose a tau C, like usual. Tau C may be one half tau, something like that. Okay? All right. Um, and so it's, um, you should be at least familiar with how to use this table. Okay? So in the exam, I haven't prepared the exam because it wasn't until this morning I realized it was actually Tuesday. But that'll give me plenty of time to have fun this weekend. Um, and my, my goal will be to do the same thing I did on the first exam. I'll try to make it short, concise. We're not done, by the way. Don't get comfortable. Okay. Um, and see. So here is, okay, well, I have to kind of glean through this pretty quickly. But here's another example, so it's not all bad. So I give you this transfer function. I'm going to actually show you how to implement this in, in uh, Simulink, but I'll have to do it quickly. Here's the model I give you, okay? I say, and I give you this. I've already done this example. Not quite, but okay. Um, so I give you this example. Here's the process transfer function. I tell you here's the desired closed loop response. The IMC filter is this. Go, I ask you to go through the design procedure. Hopefully at this point you can see that you have to take the G plus and you have to get rid of the bad stuff here, okay? That means plug in the, G, the S minus 1 here, make it an all pass by plugging the S plus 1 here, and then check the gain. The gain is not going to be correct, so you need to append a minus 1 there, okay? So there's your G plus. The G minus is this thing, right? All you've done here is change that to a plus and put a minus sign there. Design the IMC controller, 1 over G minus times F, where G minus is that, F is that. Plug it in, you get that thing, okay? All right, now I'm not nice in this case, and I say, now please give me the regular controller. This is a, should be a lowercase c, I'm not sure. It's the, it's the regular standard feedback controller. So you've got to plug the IMC controller in there and there, and you have to plug the G in there. And, I mean, you can see this isn't fun, right? So there's a lot of algebra involved here. Um, so, you know, what's the goal? Get the ratio of two polynomials, okay? And if you do that, you'll end up with this. Now, um, if we, we can simplify this a little bit, and this should always work this way. So if you multiply this thing out, like the, I don't simplify the numerator, but the denominator, so you'll get s squared, what, plus 5s. There's also a 4s there, so that's plus 9s. And then you can see you have a plus 4 minus 4. They cancel, so there's no term there. If you've designed the controller correctly, there will never be a constant in the denominator. Okay, why? Because the controller, when you're done designing it, should always have this property that GC of 0 should be equal to, that's my idea of infinity, okay? That's what that symbol means. Looks like two, s anyway, okay. Um, so, right, if you plug S equals 0 in here, this denominator is going to be 0 divided by 0 infinity. So. Any controller that has integral action has this property. I mean, you can do the same thing with a PI controller, right? It's 1 over tau IS, plug in S equals 0. It's infinity. So this is a property of any con 
controller has integral action. So if you've done all these calculations correctly, but you get down to this point, if there's a constant there like plus two, you made a mistake somewhere, because there shouldn't be, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna have to stop in like a minute, but so okay, so let's look at this thing. I can tell you, this is not a PID controller. How do I know that? Because PID controllers don't admit squares down here. It's not PID, okay? So how do you implement this thing then? You can just implement this directly in, in uh, MATLAB, and that's what I've done here, so. I'm just, so this should look pretty familiar to you, I hope, right? This is, an I, this is a block diagram in Simulink. So what do I have here? I have an output, I add some disturbance, I feed this back, compare it to the send point, generate an error signal, goes through the controller, which I'll talk about. That sends a signal to the process, right? So the process, I've, I've just told you, okay, I've written the process like this. That's this guy here. So that's what I'll, as on the previous page, I've just multiplied it out because that's how MATLAB wants you to enter it. Just ratio of two polynomials, same thing. Okay. And then I did the same thing with the controller. So you see, if you want to implement this controller in Simulink, you don't put in a PID block because this thing is not a PID controller. You just put in some arbitrary transfer function block and you enter that transfer function. Okay, and that's your controller. It's not PID, just the transfer function. Okay. Um, and I won't go through the details of this, but I can tell you it works, okay? So here's a picture for a set point change. So cruising along, do a set point change at time equal five. You see that? Initially goes in the wrong direction. Why? Because the process has a right half plane zero and you can't get rid of it. So if the process without control initially has an inverse response, so does your closed loop system because it's not something you can eliminate, okay? So it initially goes in the wrong direction because that right half plane zero and then it goes back to the set point pretty quickly. So the it works, okay? So the main point of this example is two, and you can also do a disturbance, that also works, okay? The point of this example is twofold. Number one, to go through another example of doing the procedure including the factorization and then to show you that even if the controller is not PID, you can still implement it in Simulink just by implementing some arbitrary transfer function, okay? All right, so sorry, I probably kept you a couple minutes late. Okay. No, I didn't actually. Not sorry. So um, we'll do the review tomorrow, and then we have the test Tuesday. <laughs>